Hello, Larry, WD0AKX. In a previous video, I showed you my Drake AC4 power supply that I rebuilt. It's ready to go back in service. That will get remounted in my Drake MS4 matching uh, speaker cabinet. This is designed to house the power supply for the Drake TR4 series radios. And I have my Drake on the bench here now and I'm going to replace some electrolytic capacitors in there that should be replaced after all these years. And the rig was purchased in 1976, late just before I got my ham ticket. And it's been a great radio since then, but it's time to replace some capacitors. So I'll just show you the ones I'm going to replace here. I will be replacing five capacitors, all electrolytics. And this is the diagram of the Drake. Four of those capacitors are all mounted inside of one package. It's a multi-section capacitor. So there, it's labeled as capacitor C145, but they divide it up into sections like A, B, C, and D. So on the Drake schematic, this is where C145 section A is. That's a uh, 20 microfarad, a 10 microfarad C145D. And moving over here, C145 section C, 10 microfarad, and a 60 microfarad at C145D right there on the diagram. Just below that here is a smaller capacitor, uh, 10 microfarad C135. That will be replaced by the smaller electrolytic style capacitor. Here's a look at the multi section capacitor I was telling you about. And I found these at Hayseed Hamfest Company. Tom N0JMY does a great job of uh, putting out these capacitors for vintage style equipment, vintage radios like my Drake. So I found this capacitor kit online. And uh, look at that nice looking capacitor. Now the way these multi-sections work, there's four capacitors inside this housing. You'll see each one has a symbol of its own. So on the bottom there's corresponding legs uh, terminals and between the housing is the ground side of each capacitor and then your terminal corresponds to whatever value you need to use here. And this is a high voltage uh, rated capacitor, 350 volts except for the last one at 50 volts here. So you need that for this high voltage circuit. It's going to be going Here's into. a look at the smaller capacitor and it is an electrolytic also. Now most electrolytics are polarized. Not all, there are non-polarized electrolytics, but uh, most are polarized and you'll see them labeled with a minus side on one side and it'll have a shorter lead on it. They always have to go back in the circuit at, on the, with the proper polarity or the capacitor is probably going to explode on you when power is applied or at least not work now properly. I'll show you where those capacitors are located in the radio. This is the front side of my Drake TR4 CW with the uh, covers removed in the bottom. And if you go in right from behind the front VFO dial, there's the four section capacitor, the electrolytic that I'm going to be replacing. Okay, I just turned the radio upside down and this is the noise blanker control, the VFO dial. So that capacitor is located right down here. So that's the terminals I need to get at. Now as I said when I was working on my power supply for the, the AC4, um, you don't want to mess with these circuits. They're high voltage unless you really are familiar with working on high voltage equipment because uh, there's a lot of lethal voltages that are present in these radios when they're powered up and even when they're not powered up the capacitors can store a charge. So I always make sure I discharge the capacitors, all the electrolytics that can store a charge before I even uh, poke around in the radio. So these are discharged. Now to locate the other capacitor, C135, just follow from here that capacitor. Just go over on the board a little ways you'll see a uh, a choke or a transformer here. And then you'll come across this board with a blue variable resistor uh, on it. And the capacitor I want to replace is right there. It's a tantalum looking capacitor, a brown with a black and blue stripe on it. And I can get at the solder terminals right on the back side of this board. Now that's C135. And 
I am told that not all the Drake uh, radios have this board mounted vertically. There may be some variations, so you want to locate the right capacitor if you're going to do this. And once again, that's C135 located near the receiver audio output tube, the 6AQ5. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this multi-section capacitor. And it will be a little challenging to get out because the tabs on the ground side of the capacitor are soldered to the chassis on both sides of the capacitor. So I'm going to probably need a good size heat uh, gun, soldering gun to heat that up or um, or else I may end up just cutting them, cutting it out and then soldering in the new one. But um, I'll go ahead and replace that capacitor now. All right, I was able to replace these capacitors or this can and rewire it the same way the old one was. It does take a lot of heat uh, to unsolder these tabs from the chassis. So what I found was easier for me to do was take my Dremel tool in and cut one of the tabs off and then start bending the capacitor up from the top side and kind of twist it off. And then I put the new capacitor in and then I was able to heat up the solder enough to re reflow the solder from the tabs, the new tabs onto the chassis, the solder that was on the chassis. So that worked out fine. So that one's replaced and then I went over this other one and uh, replace that. I have the electrolytic in there now. Looking at the schematic again, the positive side of that 10 microfarad electrolytic will go to pin 2 of the audio output tube and uh, the minus side ends up going to the audio transformer and the head or the uh, yeah the headphone jack. So this is the capacitor I just replaced. It is a tantalum capacitor and they are marked just the opposite. Electrolytics mark the minus side of the device and the tantalums make this marking on the positive side. This green mark here is the positive leg. So don't confuse that with your electrolytic where you want the marking is the minus side. And there's the new capacitor installed. Looks pretty nice, huh? Okay, it looks like it's time to put the radio to the test and the power supply. <clears throat> got the matching speaker so I can hear audio if we get audio when it comes up. And I've got the radio still out of the housing so I can just kind of keep an eye on things. And over here is the AC4 power supply. Now, if everything comes to life as normal like it should, then I'll need to make sure I set my bias control here on the AC4 power supply uh, for 100 milliamps on the uh, meter like it says in the instructions on the in the manual. Well, now as I usually do I'm gonna turn on have the uh, power supply plugged into my variac so I can bring the voltage up slowly. So I'll turn that on set at zero volts and I'll just start bringing that up slowly and check my current draw. It looks like uh, we don't have any sh dead shorts or anything like that. So I'll just bring up the voltage slowly. Everything uh, is looking okay here so far. Bring it up slowly and I'll do that until I get up to 120 volts there. The radio uh, lights are on now at that voltage see my lamps are lit up now at 80 volts there watching the top voltage scale that's 120 volts here and I do hear audio from the speaker now background noise static so I think we're gonna be all right my lights are on there's 120 volts the radio did come to life the volume the noise from the speaker and I have an antenna connected for just for receive I'm on 40 meters here right now in the evening. Looks like we're receiving just fine. Let me see. So this is the bias control on the AC4 power supply. Set it with a screwdriver. So I'm going to set that. So according to the manual, I should have my sideband switch in a counterclockwise position. And turn my selector switch to the XCW position while watching the meter and set it at 0.1 amps there, plate amp meter. So 
as you can see looks like it's pretty close there right now the way it is I'll adjust it slightly and you can see it very it's lower and there's point one Northwest, southeast on 80, and kind of northeast, southwest on 40. Over. City, and sometimes uh, we can uh, see the line there. Yeah. So you hold those two fuel five, do you? Yeah. Checking out a little 80 meters here, 75 meters. The receiver seems to be functioning normal. Here's what the panel meters look like in the dark here. This is kind of interesting. I have a parts list from January 1st, 1977 that came with the manual. You could order most of the parts needed for the radio to repair it and uh, you can get a complete cabinet with feet fifteen dollars look at those prices seem awful low now here's what you could buy the tubes for two three four dollars Well, it looks like it was a success. Everything is functioning normally here with the radio, and uh, and I think we're going to be just fine, so I can put it back in service. So thanks for watching. Hope you uh, enjoyed uh, seeing kind of what I did to update some of the capacitors in my Drake here. See you later.